my YouTube friends. Plugins are an easy way to expand the functionality of OBS and create ways for your audience to interact directly with your stream. Today I want to show you the top five new plugins you probably haven't seen for OBS. These are pretty cool and they're totally free. So you know what? Let's get to it! Now, all these plugins I'm gonna show you today are totally free. There are links in the description down below so you can check them out for yourself. Let's get to the first one. Captioning your stream can be pretty useful, but it used to be really hard to do and that's not true anymore. Let me show you. Here is the page and we're gonna go to downloads and we'll scroll down here. You can see that we've got Mac, and Windows and Linux for all of this. We're gonna take the Windows installation, click on it right there, and we'll open up our downloads here. And we're just gonna go ahead and double click on this OBS local vocal. And we're gonna click more info and run anyways. And we're at an administrative prompt that you can't see, but just click yes. And then we're going to click next. And you just wanna make sure that this is the location of your OBS studio. Yours is probably going to be in C program files, OBS studio. As you can see, mine is not, but it usually finds it pretty easily. We're gonna click next and it's going to tell you what the install is going to be called. We'll click next and then just install it. And then we could just click finished and now local vocal is installed. Let me show you what you could do with this. So now that we have it installed, all we have to do is go and click this plus right here. And what I'm gonna do is just add a text source. We're gonna call this transcribe and click okay. And then what we wanna do is set it up however we want. So whatever font we wanna use, we could select it right here. I'm gonna use my usual font and 256 is pretty big. I think we'll go with 100 and click okay. And we could just type some text in here so we see what it looks like and we can modify this however we want. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down here, put it where we would normally see transcribed text. We could go and change the color of the text and we can add background to the text if we wanna make it more visible. We can add an outline and our outline color. We can change that, make this black and we can change the size of the outline a little bit. So any of the normal text things that you would do to adjust this, you can do it and so we can add a little bit of a background color to our text you can see how it shows up right there just to make sure that it's totally visible and I'm just gonna go up here I'm gonna go ahead and remove any text click OK now we're gonna go to our audio device that we're gonna use in this case it is in our video capture device we'll just right click and we're gonna go to filters and we want to go to the audio portion of these filters click the plus and you're going to see our local vocal transcription and you just select that. Now there are lots of different options that you can choose here. We're gonna to go to our subtitle output and we're gonna select the transcribe that we did create already. And if I moved out here, you can see it's already transcribing. So we've got the language that it is gonna use and you can see there are whole bunches of languages right here. Right here is the model that it uses. Tiny English uses almost no power to actually run the system. So you can run it on pretty much everything. And then if you just go to Tiny, it will do hundreds of different languages. Obviously English only does English. And if you wanna do some other ones, you could try them down here. Tiny English seems to work pretty good. You can also do translate. So it will translate into other languages and that sort of stuff. But once you set this up, you get it how you want it's going to automatically transcribe. All you have to do is change the way that you want the text to come in. As you can see, it really doesn't appear on a second line. You could change it up so it will do that if you want, so you don't accidentally get it scrolling off the end of the screen. But this is a really awesome tool. It's super easy to set up and you can have your streams transcribed right off the bat. And you can save it to file if you want and use it as closed captioning later if that's what you decide to do. Countdown timers used to be difficult to set up in OBS, but there are some really easy ones these days and I'm gonna show you two of my favorites. So I've got two different countdown timers I wanna show you. 
this is one of them and the next one is this one right here both offer some really unique countdown timer type things so the Ashamantix is just a download you can see we've got Mac Linux and Windows we're gonna download the Windows one and for this one here we're gonna go ahead and just click go to download it automatically will download it up here and then we just need to go into our downloads folder and you can see it creates zip files for both of these. So I'm just gonna right click and we're going to extract all of them for our graphics clock. And for our countdown, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to extract all. Now the plug-in countdown timer is pretty simple. You could just go in here and you run it just like you normally would. There's also Mac OS install in here. We're gonna run the Windows one, more info, run anyways. It's going to install just like all the others. We're going to have an unseen prompt we have to click yes next select our directory next and next and install and there we go so that one's in there the other one runs a little bit differently so if we go here and we go into our clock you may want to move this directory somewhere you just double click on this and more info run anyways and it's going to bring this up right here and this has all the different settings that we need to set this up so let me show you how to get each of these into OBS now the first one of these is the most basic and simple that you could possibly imagine let's go ahead and just create a new scene and what I'm gonna do is go up to docs and we're going to go to our countdown timer dock and it might pop out here so you just have to dock it wherever you want it you can pretty much put it anywhere you want and you've got time and you've got period so time would be if you wanted your stream to go off at a specific time period is obviously you could set the period you've got your hours minutes and seconds up here so let's go ahead and select minutes and seconds because that's going to be probably the most useful and we can do one minute right here and all we have to do is create a message so let's go ahead and click the plus and we're going to go with our gdi text source you can set this up as usual any way you want. So let's select our Arial Black. It's a massive big font. We don't have to put anything else in here, although we can. We can add outlines and set up the text however we want. We're just gonna leave it like that. The easiest way to do this is just to go ahead and hit the refresh. It's gonna put our text on here and then we could drag it to wherever we want. So let's just put it right there. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just add media source put it in the background here so that it looks like we have some background imagery now you could also add music and anything else you want to this that would be pretty cool let's go here and we'll loop it and we'll just move that below here we've got our time we can obviously go in there and change up our time to however we want it to look but for the purposes of this so that you guys can see what it does um, we can just click play and our countdown will automatically start. We can pause it, stop it, refresh it. We can add an end message in here. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll go down here, we'll make that zero, and let's make this five seconds so we can see how that works. And we wanna refresh it and click play again. There we go. And we'll be able to see our message come up and boom. So needless to say, you can do all kinds of stuff with this for your opening scene. You can center it up. You just want to kind of make sure everything works the way that it's supposed to work before you kick it off. And then once you kick it off and your stream has started, you can change the message to on break and add as much time as you want. Super easy to do. And this is a pretty simple way to create a countdown timer. The other one is a tad bit more confusing, but let me show you how it works. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and click the plus and I'm gonna add a window capture. So there we go. And we're gonna click okay on that. And I'm just gonna embiggen it a little bit. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go to filters. And I'm gonna add chroma key. And there we go. So now we've removed the green background. And all I'm gonna do is go up to the top here, hold down the alt key crop this up and there we go and we can make it whatever size we want now the beautiful thing about how this works is if we go into our clock here 
we can set it up to do all kinds of different things. So if we wanted to count down five minutes and we want to put our message up here, we can do that starting soon and five minutes. When we click start countdown, you could see it adds this right here. It adds a countdown right there that we can see starting soon on there. We can actually physically take that countdown, move it anywhere we want. So if we wanted the countdown to be down here, we could place it down there and we have a nifty little graphical thing there. It works really well. There are so many different features. We can go down here to skin properties and change up just about every aspect of how these clocks work. And then there are a bunch of different clock faces that we can choose from. And these clock faces have aspects to them that could be modified as well. So we could take this six, we could put it down here in the location where it's supposed to go. And we can add all kinds of different things. We can loop messages, add countdown ending messages. We can play sounds at the end of them. There are just so many cool things that you can do with this particular countdown timer. And what I would probably do is go ahead and add a background into the back that would be appealing. So we'll click the plus and we'll go to a media source and let's grab a background here. I think something like this stained glass one might be a little too busy. Let's take a look and see. So now we could take this clock and move it over here into the center. That might be a little bit busy, but you get the point. You can do all kinds of cool things with this. And there are so many different watch faces that you could choose from to make this really, really cool. I absolutely love this. It's such a different style. It's so unique. And maybe you want to check it out for yourself as well. Finding ways to build an audience connection should always be the goal of your stream. Active user polls are a great way to get your audience involved. And I found an awesome way to easily do it. So for this one here, we go to downloads and it's going to take us right here. So we'll put our name in here and the subject of the poll let's say best streaming service and we can set up timing for the poll if you want however long you want your poll to run along with your time zone you can click here and you can configure alerts for your poll so if you want the alert to go off whenever somebody votes in the poll and have an alert message and all that kind of stuff you could play audio if you want for your alert. So we can set this. You can select the audio that you want. Oh my God. You can set up a Giphy right here that you can find pretty much lots of different places. You can have your alert message right here. Uh, you can change the alert message color and the parameters. All that kind of stuff is really, really simple to set up. And then you just have your poll options here. Let's go with uh, YouTube and you can change the color of the text for it. And we'll go with Twitch and let's add an option. We'll go with kick and there we go. And then we can create the poll. Once your poll is ready, this is what you're going to see. So we can just copy to the browser. Then we go over into here. And what we're going to do is go ahead and click the plus. We're going to go to browser and we'll call this poll. We'll go right here and we're going to paste that in there. We want to control the audio via OBS and click OK. And our poll is going to show up right here. Then you can take your voting URL and your alerts widget URL and you can place the alerts widget into your browser source and you can put your share the vote URL right in the chat. So let's go ahead and copy this and we'll put our alerts for our poll in here. And all you have to do is go to browser, put alerts, poll, click OK. And we'll paste that in here like that. And we can control any audio via OBS. And there we go. So if we go in here, we can select interact and boom. There we go. That's what this is going to look like. And it's going to play that sound. We can just place it anywhere we want on the screen. And so when someone votes, that's what's going to come up. So we can leave that up there. We share the URL. When people vote, it will come up here. So let me show you how that's going to work or what it's going to look like. So we'll go ahead in here. And we're going to grab this URL right here and we'll just click the plus. 
go and paste that URL and you can see that you're going to get your voting thing you can put your nickname in there and we can submit our vote so let's just put Mike and we can submit it and we could go back over here and boom you could see one vote and we get the little thingy so that's how this works you can have the alert or not have the alert whatever you want to do you can not have sound in the alert as well because that could get annoying if you get a hundred different people voting it's really really cool and simple easy to set up and you can do up to a hundred of these for one live stream you can set them up and you could use something like the downstream keyer just activate each one as you want to and then just drop the links in the chat or put the links in the description for poll one poll two poll three it's really that simple it's super basic and super easy to set up and i highly recommend that you check it out if you want a way for your audience to interact more with your live stream needless to say i love 80s and 80s graphics and here is an easy cool effect that can have so many different uses it's called pixel art and let me show you how it works to install our pixel art one here we're going to go to downloads it's going to take us to the github we can scroll down here and you can see this is for mac os windows and linux we're going to get the Windows 64 installer. Then all we need to do is go to our downloads and we can double click on the installer. We're going to go ahead and click more info and run anyways. Now we're going to get an administrative prompt you can't see, but we're going to go ahead and click yes on that. And then next. And here is where you're going to decide where you want it to go. So find your OBS folder if it's not the one listed here and then click next. It tells you what it's going to be installed as. Click next and then install. And now pixel art is installed on our system. Now all we need to do is use it. So we can use it on a video capture device like this one by going into filters and then clicking plus under effect filters and going to pixel art. And so basically you have downscales which will Make your pixels larger, like that. Pretty cool. So select a pixel size that you want, and we can adjust our dither speed and our dither level to kind of uh, adjust how you want it to look. There you go. So you can see what each one of these does. Then you can adjust the color of your pixels right here. And let's adjust this up, and then we can adjust this and you can kind of see what this does uh, so if I didn't want my picture quite as blue you can adjust this down like that give it more of a greenish tint so there are all kinds of different things that you could do so that's what it's going to make an image look like we can click close and there we go but we don't have to just do this on images so let's go ahead and remove that filter right there and let's create a text file and there we go and just real simple we'll move it down here on the bottom and we're gonna right click go to filters and we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna add our pixel art to the filter and there we go so we could pretty much turn any font into a file like this and there we go so we could take this and create pixel art from literally any image any text file or anything we want so we'll go ahead and remove that and we'll try one more thing so basically you could use this in transitions or all kinds of other really cool things I'm gonna go and just for one more thing we'll add an image and I'm gonna browse and so there you can see my background image and I'm gonna take that image and we're gonna add the art filter to it pixel art and we're gonna go ahead and just pixelize this a little bit like that and there we go so then what we can do we'll move this down below here and I can just take this and we'll go into filters and what we're gonna do is I'll click here I'll use my Nvidia background removal tool and we'll just remove the background click close and there we go so now I'm in front of a pixelated of my own background pretty awesome stuff now I could actually pixelate me I could use this in transitions I could do all kinds of crazy stuff this is a really neat one to mess around with and the only limit really 
is your imagination. Lower thirds and titles are a great way to add some cool graphics to your live stream, but there isn't anything built in OBS to do it. I found an awesome easy way to add them and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Now this last one doesn't require us to install anything, which makes it awesome. We're going to click go to download. It's going to bring up this page right here. Now the reason why this doesn't actually require you to do any installs is because it functions on the WebSocket. The WebSocket is a feature that's built into OBS that allows other applications to control what OBS does. So if we go into tools and we go to our WebSocket server settings, you just want to make sure that you have your WebSocket service enabled. Then down here, you've got your server port and your authentication which is a password that you can set up. Now, since this is running all local for me, I don't have any passwords set up, but of course you can if you want. We can just click apply. And then when we go over here and all you have to do, usually it will come up, but I was messing around with this before. So mine is already trying to connect. But what you can do is this is what's gonna come up normally. You just wanna click connect. And you'll be able to know that it's connected by going over into your OBS and you can see the connections right here. So we could just click apply and OK and you can see it automatically puts the source into whatever scene you're actually working in. So if I were to create a new scene right here and I wanted to run it in that scene, all I have to do is go back over here and all you have to do is reconnect and it will put it in there. And so how does this work? Well. We can go over into here and we can edit any of these. What I'm going to do is minimize this like that and we'll bring it over here. We'll bring that up and if I just click it, you can see what it looks like. So that has it in the middle of the screen, but we can go and edit this and I could put it in the top left, save it and boom. Now it's going to show up in the top left. Now I have to uh, modify this so we can actually see the whole screen. There we go. And it'll be in the top left. So we could go ahead and edit this and we could put whatever we want in here. And down here we could put, save it and boom. It'd be nice if we spelled it right, but we didn't and it still works. So there we go. And Try it one more time. So you could do quotes, lower thirds, basic subtitles. They play like this. You can place them wherever you want in your live stream. And obviously it's going to be on whatever screen you happen to have these on. So there you go. It works super, super simple. And the one major complaint that people are going to have I can tell you this already and you can turn your FX overlays on and off right here for any of your scenes. But the one main complaint that people are going to have is how do I control this so I can make my lower thirds happen? It's pretty simple. We're going to have this down in the bottom left hand corner and we'll go to our main scene and let me show you what that looks like. It has a really nice animation, some awesome color. I mean, these are super awesome. What if we wanted to have this on the screen? Well, we can just go right here and click the control C and that will copy that out. Then I'm gonna double click on our thing so we can embiggen it. And what I'm gonna do is go into docs and I'm gonna go to custom browser docs and we're gonna call this lower third and I'm just gonna paste that in there and click apply and bada bing it brings it up so I could just bring this over and dock it wherever I want and we don't have to see the whole thing we could modify it and everything right in here if we wanted to like we are right now just click save on there we'll redock it over here We'll just scrunch it up like this. I mean, we know what it is, so we can just click it over here and bada bang, it will run. This adds awesome lower thirds to any scene and you can edit them on the fly and add and remove lower thirds right here. We can create new ones with texts, metadata, all that kind of stuff. Put the position in there, 
save it out. This is an awesome tool and the only thing that makes it a little less usable is the fact that you can't program it in to your hotkeys or something like that, but the ability to dock it kind of fixes all that anyways. Who doesn't love a high quality lower third? I love them, they're awesome. Check it out, try out all the different features. I think you're really gonna love it. There you have it, five awesome new plugins. Did you know about any of these before the video? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna see my personal favorite five OBS plugins, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one.